you, you, you are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover how a couple months but it's exist. This is nothing you can know what's up in the hood. Recently, Mac Miller, a famous rap artist, had an unfortunate death due to an overdose, only at the age of 26. This has been a common thing that has been happening in recent times. Mental health has played a major role in the amount of casualties over the past two decades. This problem has troubled young people and families across America. Events like this has been going unnoticed, so there has to be a way to recognize these symptoms before it takes over more of the country's youth. This is not the only incident that has happened this year. In the summer of 2018, June 8th, a well-known chef, Anthony Bourdain, had a tragic death due to his suicide by hanging. It was very unexpected and surprising for not only his fans, but Coe's family. Most suicides are because people suffer from mental health and high emotions that lead to impulsivity. If he had gotten the help and education when younger, would he still be with us today? People were more aware of mental health and the symptoms it causes. Would we be able to help more kids in need before it's too late? A great way to educate children about mental health is to make it mandatory to be taught in schools. If more people are aware of mental health status, then they would be able to understand their own mental health state and come up with solutions to counteract them before it affects them harshly in their adulthood. Yes, I do think it should be mandatory. I think that school should be a site where students learn about themselves and have insight and also sets them up for a long, happy life, gives them the tools that they need to achieve that. And so certainly mental health is a big part of that. We should really be more cons like concerned about our mental issue with, with like a mental issue with students and teachers in general. That way it's a better day for both. And like, just it's just a more uplifting day, you know. That's right. It should be mandatory. I do think I do think it's really important. I would do something about it myself if I had the power or like I could do something. In a five year period, rates of severe youth depression have increased. Fifty percent of screeners aged eleven to seventeen often think about suicide. In America, over seventy six percent of the youth has severe depression. That means one point seven million kids didn't get the treatment that they needed. Oregon has the highest rate according to 2012 to 2014 data analyzed by the U.S. Only 20% of the children are diagnosed and receive treatment. That means 80%, which is about 12 million, aren't even receiving treatment. Like, health is, our mental health is not healthy at all, so I feel like that would be a good class so we could take and we could like reflect on our, on our own experiences and it will help so much for teens, especially teenagers, like high school is where most mental health is needed because that's where more peer pressure is at and that's where the more, like the cyber bullying is at, that's where the actual bullying is. It's just a lot of things that really affect us that we should really need. I'm Cora McCarter, this is TMC News and thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Shawnee Cross here on TMC News. Here's Mimi discussing school lunch. This is Mimi from TMC News. Recently, we have discovered that we had an outrage over school lunches. Most of the students here said that they don't agree with the lunches and that we should be served hot lunches. Most students come late often because they'd rather eat hot lunch at home than here. I would bring in my own personal lunch or go buy my own lunch. Although we have off-campus lunch, most students don't have any money or can't afford to get any food, so they come here and get cold lunches. Most students say that it makes their stomach hurt and they don't feel like eating it. So what can we do to solve the problem? All Chicago public schools have hot lunches. Could it be possible to have them at Truman Middle College? Here's Celeste with information on police brutality in Chicago. In recent years, 2014 to 2016, police violence has brought up questioning within our communities, what exactly it's doing, and who exactly is it affecting? Um, young black males. Why? Because um, of what some people do, they feel like everybody does the same thing. They, they just be stereotyping us. I feel like police brutality is getting out of hand basically because they like they do it for no reason like they do it to only certain people uh, 
uh, right there. Just there, tell you to step on the car, throw you around. Shit, since I've been outside but <laughs> for years. And now we have Katia with Block Schedule. Hi, I'm Katia Licea coming to you live from TMC News to talk about the new Block Schedule happening here at Truman Middle College. Block Schedule consists of th three classes, two hours each a day with two different lunch periods, which has been a recent change from last semester's schedule, which was six classes a day, 55 minutes each, and one lunch period. Um, I don't like it. I feel like the classes are too long. I think this is what I prefer. I, I'd, I'd rather be here than anything. For more information, please contact Truman Middle College front office. And now here's Victor with more information on block scheduling. Go ahead, Victor. Truman Middle College started block scheduling on February 2016 to help improve students, but they realized the negative impact it would have on them. Each class period is two hours long now. Some students say that that the new block scheduling helps them get their class work done because they have more time to work on it. Yeah, the block, I think it's good. I think overall it's probably good. There are things about it I don't like, but there are things about it that I do like. You know, I, as a teacher, I don't really like having to get everybody all settled down when they first walk in. And uh, so that's difficult. And so there's less of that now, right? Once to, there's only two, I only have to start class two times now rather than four times. Uh, but it's also hard to keep everybody's energy level up over the course of two hours, including my own. You know, I'm, I'm really tired after two hours also. To be honest, I hate it. I don't think they should have ever done it, but it's something we can do. This is TMC News. I'm Shawnee Cross, and you have a great day, America. They were talking about the Hyperloop. So if you didn't know, the Hyperloop is going to be a super fast train that is going to be running through metropolitan areas in the Midwest. This, um, this technological design has been created by Elon Musk, the same person who created Tesla cars and SpaceX. Now, although the Hyperloop has been set to release in 2021 to 2023, there hasn't been an official release for the amount of money it's going to cost for each ride, but the release will come in the next 10 to 12 months. The budget for the train hasn't been discussed as well. Good morning, TMC. Welcome to TMC News. It's your host, Zamir Rivera, reporting the facts. So today, the segment is going to be about the Hyperloop train system that is being built by Elon Musk. We're now going to cut to me interviewing other people on what they think of this train. I think that um, it's going to help a lot because there's a lot of people who use the trains to commute, and if they're going to use the Hyperloop, it's going to go faster all over the place. That's very true. Now, do you think that the money being spent on the Hyperloop, which is going to be $87 million on the main station and $1.6 billion on the train itself, do you think that could be put towards better uses in Chicago? Oh, definitely. 100%. They could be using it on the roads. They could be using it on the education system. They could be using it on so much more than just a train to lead you somewhere else in Chicago. And knowing this product being made is probably going to be very expensive and only suitable for the super rich and elite, do you think that this is going to be a liability rather than a necessity for people? It is definitely not going to be a necessity for people. Everyone's still going to use the CTA. Um, they're not going to be using this Hyperloop train. They're probably not even going to afford it knowing how much it is to take it. I think if it were connecting cities, it would be a great idea because I, I grew up in the East Coast and on the East Coast, it's kind of all one city from Richmond, Virginia up to Maine. Right. And in the Midwest, in Chicago, I kind of feel like we're on an island. So I think if it were easier to get and faster to get to other cities nearby, that would be great. Do you feel like the Hyperloop would be good for Chicago financially? I can't see any reason why not, unless it's really expensive and costs the city a lot of money to build. Right. So I think it's a very good idea, and it just depends on the engineering because anything can go wrong. Because you know that's a very fast train. So it all depends on uh, the trials and errors that the train might have in the future. But I feel like it would be a very good thing because usually people that's all the way on the south side or all the way on the north side, it takes a long time for them to get transportation back and forth to work or whether it's... Man, I think it all depends on whether or not you want that tra that transportation, you feel me? If it's less than gas money, I'm pretty sure if people ain't got no car, they're going to use that transportation. And, like, the quality of time, you'll get there. So if it's worth it, people will pay for it. If it's not, they'll just keep the traditional red line that they take. 
And the unofficial release date for the Hyperloop is going to be around 2021 to 2023. Do you think that seems kind of rushed, or do you think that seems like about the right time to complete a project such as big as this? I don't really know about engineering like that, but I do know about trials and error. And for something to be that big and not um, be tested as much, I feel like is they're taking a big risk because anything can happen. Anything can happen, and that's right. Well, developers, thank you for your time here today. Well, now you've been all caught up. Hopefully, the next time you want to get around the country, you choose the Hyperloop, unless you don't want to spend a lot of money. This is TMC News. I'm Zamir Rivera, signing off. I just can't believe this. Yeah, somebody must have snitched on Mike. I don't know who, but I know. Yeah, it had to be somebody from the inside. He was supposed to deliver the drugs to Santiago last night. I really don't know, but I told him to watch the company that he keep. Man, I don't know, but uh, I need to get up out of here because it's going to be a few years before he get out. Mom, <sighs> where's they taking dad and when he's coming back? My dad been in prison for eight years and ain't getting out for another 10. I'm all I got after that. Yo, Moses, what's up, Nothing bro? Nothing been the same. Yo, Sean, what's up? I ain't seen you in forever, bro. What you been on? You know me, just chasing that paper. I see you. Look at you dripping with the new shoes on. Yeah, that's just one of many. Yeah, man, you got to put me on. Lord knows I need it. Man, I been told you what's up. You just too scared to take risks. You and your mama been living off that dog food for the longest. And she tripping off a little fear. Your dad used to bring all in hell of money. You don't talk to him no more? Nah, man, I don't even visit him. Bro, that's cold, man. He was one of them true OGs, you know? He knew the game better than most. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really trying to take that path for myself. Like, he in jail for life. Why would I want that for myself? So what, you think you better than us? Bro, this is all we know. Look who you're around, game bangers and drug dealers. This is our life. And the people that try to leave, they gonna get messed up. Yeah. I mean, I guess you're right. What am I doing, man? I'm starving. Please. I see you, bro. Look, if you really about it, I got a job that you can do. We gonna split the cash two ways. All right, all right, bet. That sound good, that sound good. All right, I'm gonna let you know. All right. Hey, yo, Moses, what's the word, bro? Not right now, just cooling. Bro? You ready to go make this move? I mean, I guess I'm ready. I don't really got a choice. I need it. All right, bet. I know you got the backpack, so just meet Bell on Pulaski and Armitage, all right? You gonna give him the bag, and he gonna give you the cash, and we gonna split it both ways, just like that. All right, I got you. All right, no doubt. I'll check it out when it's finished. All right, bet. Hello? Where you been at? My bad, I got a lot on my plate right now. I ain't really been around. You know you can always talk to me. I'm here for you. But anyways, I gotta tell you something important. What's that? I'm pregnant. Seven weeks. Are you serious? Why would I lie to you? <sighs> Hello? Moses, are you there? You're under arrest for illegal substances. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. It's Vail reporting with TMC News. Today we are covering school starts times. Statistically, from February 8th to March 6th, there has been a total of 673 tardies in Truman Middle College alone. 
And like a lot of the reasons some students are late is because they either go to sleep late from work or maybe they just have kids and other things that they have to take care of. For the first time, federal centers for schooling is urgent educating policymakers to start middle and high schools later for students so they can get more sleep and be more ready, be on time. I feel like school should start earlier so that students can have the rest of the evening uh, per se to, you know, do what they want to do. I do not think school starts too early for students. I think it is practice for when you get into the real world. And I know like myself and other teachers here at TMC, we actually build in time for students to get their work done during class, so. In more than 40 states, at least 75% of public schools start earlier than 8.30, while schools with later start times conclude in students getting more sleep and being on time to school. And it won't affect their grades, or they won't have to stress and worry about possibly being dropped just because of the amount of tardies. Because sometimes I sleep late, so I won't always wake up early, or I won't always be able to wake up early because I have a hard time waking up in the morning, so I'm pretty sure the young people have a hard time as well waking up. So if you kind of give them a later time, it may do better for them getting to school on time. So I think it'll benefit everybody. This is Vail reporting with TMC News. Salas Kibble here at Truman Middle College to report on the families that are being separated at the border and taken away from their homes. This has been going on since 2014 by the Obama administration and it's only getting worse ever since Donald Trump was elected for president. We need to talk about how these families are being detained, kids are being sent to foster homes and parents back to their own home countries. I feel sad. It was friends, I have a lot of friends that deal with this issue and it's Unfair. I feel like the government should stand up and do something about it instead of taking the money from the poverty. I don't think it should be legal at all. Taking kids from their parents is extremely wrong and putting them through the system is very bad on their mental health. I know that the government is doing this to try to prove a point, saying that they're fed up with the mass amount of immigrants crossing the border. But I think it's very unhumane that they're doing this because they're taking small children away from their parents and that, that adds a psychological effect to it. We had some good interviews today. Thanks for watching, and stay in tune to Middle College. Good morning, people. This is Mubarak reporting for TMC News, and we're gonna be talking about the 2018 gubernatorial elections. Eight people running for the post of governor in the state of Illinois. The 2018 Illinois gubernatorial election takes place as part of the 2018 Illinois general elections and elect the governor of Illinois. The Democratic and Republican general primary elections will take place on the March 20th, 2018, and the general election will take place on the November 6th, 2018. So we went around Truman College asking people for their opinions, and this is what they had to say on the 2018 gubernatorial elections. The 2018 gubernatorial election, first off, love that word gubernatorial. Uh, secondly, I know that there's a whole bunch of Republicans and Democrats running for it. Um, of course, the Republicans have been uh, kind of in battle the past two years with the whole stalemate between Democrats and Republicans. Now we have the Republicans who, or sorry, the Democrats who, uh, don't look as good as they should on paper. Um, I, I guess the teacher unions voting for, uh, was that J.B. Pritzker? Um, we'll see how my vote turns out. Because I'm tired of um, these idiot politicians <laughs> ruining our country. If I could vote, I mean, I honestly don't know who's running, so I wouldn't be able to give you an answer for that. So although there's been a lot of debates about the 2018 gubernatorial elections, uh, I just want the people at home to get registered and go vote. You could check out your polling areas on headcount.org to know where in your area you could go vote. 
So uh, this is Mubarak Ashiru reporting for TMC News. So thank you very much and have a good day. Too pretty to be crying. Where the hell were you yesterday? I was, I'm sorry. I was with my mom. It doesn't matter. You're always doing crap for your mom. Why don't? She, you, what, she about about. what about me? What about? What is she? What do you mean? What about me? I was me? gonna be late. Look. Okay. It doesn't matter. No. Down. No. This is. <sighs> hey, are you okay? Do I look okay? I'm gonna kill them. I swear. Don't cry. Your mascara is running. You look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? I'm Marina. I'm Pepper. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Pepper. Do you want to go somewhere? Where? Anywhere. Come on, let's go. All right. Why, thank you. <laughs> Marina! Hi. Where the hell have you been? Um, we were what? What, were you ditching? Dude, you need to chill. It's not that serious. Who the hell are you? No, no, it's okay. come on, no, let's go. Hey, Pat. Oh, hey, Marina. How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm all right. Look, uh, I'm sorry about yesterday. That was totally unnecessary. No, 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 it's fine. It was okay. Seth's fault. He shouldn't have been posed, you know? No. But we were having such a great time, you know? Yeah. It's not your fault at no. all. It's totally my fault. It is. We should definitely have, like, you know, maybe stayed in the school or something. No, but... That's my Seth, fault, you know? I didn't... Um. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I had fun yesterday. Yeah, me too. Did you see? He was so mad. I know. That was so uncomfortable. I'm gonna put you on a leash. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so he has some serious problems. He needs to stop being so territorial over you. I feel bad, but it's kind of like, why are you crazy? <laughs> why are you crazy? Dude, and the way he freaking punched the freaking locker that one day. Did you oh see my me god. jump? <laughs> like, oh my god. I, remember I feared for your life. Oh he has some anger awful. issues. Why do you even like him? That's crazy. Well, I mean, he has a really good scholarship, you know? Yeah, but what about his personality? Like, well, I mean, he just, he's kind of impatient, I guess. Yeah, but you, you haven't told me anything why you like him. Well, my parents like him. That's not good enough. You have to, you have to pick someone who you love, not some, someone that your parents pick out for you. That's true. He's not good for you. He really isn't, Marina. Well, you know there's only one way to find out if you're as crazy as he is. How? Oh. Well... <laughs> Hello, can I speak to the parents or guardian of uh, Marina Marbles? Yes, this is her. Well, hello, this is Mr. Baldwin from Truman Middle College. I'm calling in regards of Marina Marbles. Are you aware of her absence today? No. Are you sure it was her? Yes, I'm very sure it was her, but uh, I think we need to set up a conference. Okay, I'll be on my way. Let's play this video. Marbles, can you please come to the dean's office? What the hell is this? This is Pepper. 
So this is what you ditched school for? Seth told me all about it. Seth isn't even who you think he is. He makes you miserable. You! Don't speak. Marina, get this freak out of my face. Me and you are gonna go home and have a long talk about morals. You want to talk about morals, but is it morally right to make your daughter date a psychopath? Oh, but he has a scholarship, right? Oh, yeah, but he's nuts, just like you. This entire thing is nuts. This is natural. Dad is not at all. But this, this isn't in the Bible. I'm not dealing with this. Let's go. Where should we go? Anywhere. I'll go anywhere with you. Huh.